The Community Day Pokemon for the month of November was Shinx, and with Shinx Community Day, Luxray got the brand new move, Psychic Fangs, a move that is uh, parallel to the Poison Fangs, which sounds pretty strong. Maybe it could be a really powerful game changer for the Luxray here, uh, but overall it sounds like it's falling a little bit flat. In this video, I'm going to talk about why Psychic Fangs Luxray isn't all that great, uh, how Psychic Fangs Luxray can be good, and some IV information you might be interested in for a PvP IV on your Luxray. Looking at the stats of Psychic Fangs, it is a direct parallel to Poison Fangs. Both are 40 damage moves for 35 energy cost. Both have a 100% chance to drop your opponent's defense stat by one stage. The key differences between them is Psychic Fangs is a Psychic type move, not a Poison type move, and Psychic Fangs, for whatever reason, is a plural instead of singular like all the other Fang moves in the game. Poison Fang is good, so why is Psychic Fangs bad if they're basically the same exact move? Is it because it's a Psychic type? Uh, not exactly. The problem more so lies with Luxray than with Psychic Fangs. And to illustrate, I'll give you some comparisons between Luxray and the Poison Fang users. So when it comes to Luxray compared to these big bad Poison type Pokemon, uh, Luxray kind of fails on four different fronts. The first front it fails on is its bulk. Compared to the big Poison type Pokemon here, Luxray has like a stat product of basically nothing. In both the Great League and in the Ultra League, it is a very fragile Pokemon, uh, like most other electric types. And while there isn't a big expectation for electric type Pokemon to be tanky, when it comes to using a defense debuffing move like Poison Fangs or Psychic Fangs, uh, having that bulk allows you to wear down your opponent over time and just slowly erode them and overpower them, which bulkier Pokemon are better at doing than a glass cannon type Pokemon like Luxray. If Psychic Fangs had more damage, then that could play into Luxray's glass cannon type playstyle, uh, but for the most part, it's just a bait move. And Luxray already has pretty good charge move speed, also coupled with its spark or uh, snarl fast moves there, so it doesn't necessarily need Psychic Fangs as a bait move, so it ends up just being kind of awkward placed on Luxray compared to the Poison type Pokemon. The second problem with Luxray here is that it's not a Psychic type Pokemon. It does not get a same type attack bonus on Psychic Fangs like the Poison type Pokemon do for their Fang move. If you think about the same type attack bonus being a 20% damage boost and a uh, defense drop or an attack boost being a 25% damage increase, it's almost like the Poison type Pokemon are playing against an opponent that already has their defense dropped by one, if that makes sense when they're using their fang attacks. And as a result, the first poison fang, you know, it hits pretty softly coming from these Pokemon, uh, but usually the second and third poison fangs have to be respected. When it comes to a psychic fang from Luxray, you basically never have to respect that move unless you're a fragile Pokemon that is weak to psychic already. The third problem with Luxray is that psychic fangs doesn't really give it too much in the way of counter coverage. Uh, Luxray's biggest problem is going to be the grass and ground type Pokemon, and while psychic type coverage can help out against some of them, it's not as explosive as ground type or ghost type coverage is for the poison type Pokemon. So when it comes to wearing down your opponents or hitting them with different types of attacks, you know, the poison type Pokemon can wear down Pokemon that are weak or neutral to poison type attacks by just slinging poison at them. If they're up against something that is resisting, then they got Shadow Ball, Earth Power, Earthquake to kind of demolish them with. When it comes to Luxray, who's primarily using electric type attacks, that Psychic Fang as a counter coverage really isn't like aiding the situation. Like the poison types are poison with a dash of more poison with counter coverage. Uh, Luxray is like electric with big electric with this uh, random little dash of psychic that really isn't doing a whole lot for it. And then the fourth and final problem for Luxray here, and probably the biggest problem of all, like the biggest nail in the coffin for Psychic Fangs Luxray, is that its fast moves are Starl and Spark, which aren't very powerful fast moves. Now that doesn't sound like a big issue, uh, but when Golbat, Crobat, and Nidoqueen use Poison Fang, it usually boosts their fast move damage against their opponent by one because they have such high damaging fast moves. When it comes to Luxray, 
uh, often it doesn't boost the fast move damage at all after a uh, single Psychic Fang. So you usually need two Psychic Fangs to get a one fast move increase against your opponent. Now when you consider the total damage that you're dealing to your opponent, you know that defense drop giving you more fast move damage is a huge part of the Fang damage when it comes to Poison Fang. And for Luxray, it just really isn't happening that often with Psychic Fangs, which means overall, like it was already weak because it doesn't have the same type of attack bonus, it's already weak because it doesn't have good coverage with Luxray, and it's even weaker because often it's not even boosting his fast move damage compared to the Poison Fang users that just keep ramping up in power with each Poison Fang that happens. As a result, poor Luxray here is basically a mono electric type attacker with a relatively weak gimmick. If I were to pick a gimmicky, fragile, electric type attacker, I'd probably side with Shadow Manetric or Zeb Strika before I'd be looking at the Luxray here. That said, Luxray isn't without its advantages and is still worth building and considering for the Great League and Ultra League because it could possibly shine in limited formats. As far as Great League Luxray is concerned, I think it's going to have a real hard time standing out in limited formats because if it's a limited format that makes electric types more appealing, there are a lot more powerful electric type Pokemon that it's going to have to compete with. In the Ultra League, however, the pool is a lot smaller and there are frequently cups where electric type Pokemon are uh, hotter on the menu. For example, we recently had the Premier Cup Ultra League Classic where Amphros saw a lot of utility as a powerful, basically mono electric type attacker. The advantage that Luxray has over Amphros in this situation is that Psychic Fangs can give it some coverage against the Nidoqueens, uh, possibly allowing it to subdue Shadow Nidoqueen in many situations, and it also gives it coverage against fighting types like the Machamp, Shadow Machamp, and the uh, Frog Guy. Toxicroak. So once again, overall, it's probably a good idea to have a Great League and Ultra League Luxray evolved just in case you ever do want to build it for those formats, just in case the meta hits just right for them to sneak in and creep up on things. Another thing to consider is if they do end up buffing Spark in the future and it ends up making it so that the Poison Fang... Psychic Fang uh, can increase the damage by one instead of zero. Uh, those are things that could help out Luxray in the future. The future isn't exactly certain, but Ultra League Premier Cup Classic did get some pretty good reception, so we could see that coming back. And I think Luxray does have a really good shot in that meta in particular. So if nothing else, Ultra League Luxray sounds like a pretty decent idea. When it comes to the PvP IVs for Luxray, uh, Bulk is basically going to be the name of the game. I did do some IV analysis on Luxray in both the Great League and the Ultra League, and I did find some attack breakpoints that looked like they could be interesting, but the more I investigated them, the more flaky they became, and I think a large reason why the attack breakpoints felt so flaky and inconsistent compared to something like, you know, Nidoqueen and Shadow Nidoqueen is because it wasn't ramping the damage up further. When it comes to like Shadow Nidoqueen and Nidoqueen, if you go for an attack breakpoint boosting your damage from 4 to 5, you use a Poison Fang that turns 5 to 6, and you're just ramping up all that extra damage on your opponent, allowing you to close out a fight that much sooner. When it comes to Luxray, if you get an attack breakpoint that changes your damage from 4 to 5, and Psychic Fangs is just keeping your damage at 5 instead of turning it from 4 to 5, it, it doesn't have nearly as much value. And uh, as a result, I'd say just go with your highest stat product, Luxray, when it comes to either the Great League or the Ultra League. And a final bonus question you guys might have is, uh, if Psychic Fangs isn't so good on Luxray, which Pokemon could Psychic Fangs be good on? And looking at the pool of Pokemon that can learn Psychic Fangs, I don't think this move in particular would really be a good addition for any of them or at the very least they'd need additional changes to their kit to make psychic fangs more valuable i mean obviously we have mew mew can learn psychic fangs mew is completely broken so mew would definitely destroy with Psychic Fangs, and I hope it never gets it because it would be pretty OP. But when it comes to more reasonable Pokemon that can learn Psychic Fangs, I don't really see them doing a whole lot with it. Espeon is a pretty good consideration. It's got Confusion, heavy fast move damage. It's got its Community Day move, Shadow Ball, which is good coverage with, you know, Psychic type attacks. 
Uh, but Espeon is extraordinarily fragile, so I don't know in what world we'd want to use Espeon instead of Hypno or Shadow Hypno when it comes for, you know, our confusion jobs here. And on top of that, the Hypnos are kind of a mystery box where Espeon would be fairly straightforward. Uh, Swoobat and Giraffe Rig are both also good considerations as well, both using good damaging fast moves and Psychic Fangs giving them a nice bait move with a debuff chance, but their secondary coverage just, you know, A, no Shadow Ball, you know? So if they had something powerful for a secondary coverage, I think that could help them out even further. But now we're talking about a multi-buff kind of situation to turn these mediocre Pokemon into something halfway decent. So I don't think it'd be a massive game changer for them on its own. And then for all other Pokemon that can learn Psychic Fangs, it certainly could be interesting for them, but because they aren't getting that same type attack bonus on the Psychic Fangs, uh, just like our poor friend Lux right here, the Psychic Fangs really wouldn't be doing a whole lot for them uh, compared to getting an additional like stab move or some better counter coverage. Not that Psychic Fangs can't be good on other Pokemon, even without the same type attack bonus, I just don't think it'd have as much impact as other attacks on them. At any rate, that's all I gotta say on Psychic Fangs Lux right here. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. Uh, when it comes to considering building a Luxray, I'd probably focus more on having, you know, I'd, I'd